Hey, it's Rich, back with you for another video. Today we're flying a CJ1 Plus with one of our uh, owners out to Havasu, and we'll take you along for the ride. And just a little bit of history on, these, on the CJ1 Plus. I've talked about it before, we've flown a lot of M2s. It's the 525 that was originally a Citation Jet, and then a CJ, and then a CJ1, and then a CJ1 Plus, which they stopped making in 2011. Uh, very similar to the M2, which we've done a lot of videos on. Um, they put out a little more thrust on these motors. They put the little winglets on it. They changed the interior, and they went to G3000 on the avionics. The One Plus has uh, Collins Proline 21 avionics, which you'll see in the video. These winglets are actually Tamarack uh, aftermarket winglets, and the One Pluses had just standard wingtips, and the M2's got the little winglets as well. So we'll talk more about this airplane and uh, introduce you to Edwin on the flight, and let's go for a ride. This is 60 Alpha, left kilo 3, contact ground. Taxi kilo 3, contact ground. Station zero, Charlie Mike, runway three zero, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, three zero zero, Charlie Mike. We found a sphere. Red feeds alive. On road Pause the break here. Bonanza 8A Quebec, we change route. Pick up road set. Go under departure, see ya. Departure, good afternoon, citation 420, Charlie Mike's 1500 of heading 180. Under departure. Charlie Mike's still got a 5 meter contact, climb and maintain 5000 and then you're heading for heading 230, vectors for traffic. 5230 on a heading uh, 0 Charlie Mike. Okay, Edwin, uh, so we, uh, let's talk a little bit about, I mean, here we are flying, we got a lot, you and I have a lot to talk about, but why don't you, uh, why don't you give us a little bit of your history with aviation, how you got started, and how you got to the point you're at. To this point, very good, yeah. CJ1 Plus. So, uh, ever since I was four years old, uh, my dad used to do a lot of traveling for trade shows back in Iran where I was born and raised. Back there, there was no TSA. We used to just walk up right to the airport, you know, right to the airplane. We all have your family members, so I was always fascinated with airplanes. Pilots used to, I, I have pictures, I remember uh, pilots used to pick me up, take me to the cockpit, put me on their lab and pretend to got, got the bug but at the age of four. Um, uh, Always wanted to be an airline pilot. All my toys were airplanes. Uh, came to America, had an opportunity to join the flying club at my high school. Immediately flew a 172, fell in love with it. Altitude. And then uh, I started a Mount San Antonio College program. Where I got what was my it? Mount San Antonio College. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's in the burn. Yep. Got my ATC, commercial flight, air traffic control licenses. Started going up the ranks, commercial single engine, multi-engine. Uh, land and sea, worked my way up. Um, 
Got a job at United Express throwing back to LAX just to get an interview. Used to pick up clearances on Brazilians and jet streams for the pilots. So I had a, I had a really, really impressive resume. Was waiting for my interview date at age of 28 to, to start my airline career. Then I got diagnosed with hair cell leukemia, which devastated me. So it knocked me off my feet. I was out for That goes for you, 28.6. So you got, right when you're getting ready to join the airlines, you got diagnosed with leukemia. I was waiting for an interview date. Uh, this is uh, exactly 20 years ago. So, um, you know, airlines was weren't hiring as much, so you had to have a yeah. very detailed resume. And so just waiting for an interview date, I got, I got diagnosed, knocked me off my feet, got on the chemo program. So, um, never done any drugs in my life. Uh, my ex-wife was uh, feeding me uh, cannabis butter. With my infused my food with cannabis, kind of helping get over my my chemotherapy sessions. And so when I got well, I was like, let me look into it. Let me see what it's all about. So was that very helpful for you to during the chemo? It was. It was. It was actually making me uh, get the strength that I need to get through the disease. And, you know, chemo is like back in the day. Now they have chemo pills. Back in the day, you used to go there. Uh, I, I was wearing a continuous patch so for 24 hours a day, for 15 days straight. I was getting chemo, which is poison in your in your bloodstream. So it just uh, it makes life livable, you know, yeah. using cannabis an alternative uh, medicine. So a healthier approach rather than just pills and the modern medicine. And so. probably aviation was not. That wasn't a path you could probably pursue now. Right. Coming out of leukemia and Correct. The medical was, it, it just changes your life. Yeah. It, it's everything you know about life. It just everything changes. Yeah. So then uh, I started looking into the cannabis industry 20 years ago. Uh, found my niche. We found a dispensary in the Woodland Hills. We bought it. One turned into two, turned into the four. Then uh, I, I, I always used to fly, used to fly uh, uh, airplanes, single engine airplanes at a flying club. So, so then you a Cessna 310 for sale, fairly cheap, it was a 1960s model, uh, X model. Bought it, uh, bought it for cheap, spent three times more money than I bought it for. Got it operating, it was sitting for a couple of years, flew down for a little while, and then uh, bought myself a Baron, which I flew for 15 years, which uh, you guys got to sell. Yep. I found it, which you guys found a good home for it. Yeah, we did. Very happy. So now you and I met, we can talk, I think we're going to do another video, but it's because we had a lot to talk about. You and I met, and... Uh, he said, hey, I want to get a CJ-1 or CJ or a jet. Right. And we, uh, we, we talked for a long time. And uh, Edwin described to me what he wanted, down to the detail of the logo being on the winglets, on the winglets exactly. for marketing. So we had a lot. We, we figured out what airplane you wanted, what made sense, and we went out. I had this vision in my head to have the winglets. Yeah. I didn't know that it's there's like one, this, of, one of a kind, yeah. hard to find. And, and the paint job and everything. And the paint job. I remember our first meeting sitting at OCR for yeah. six hours. Right. Very detailed You're just discussion. Listening. You just listen and I just talked. And you guys delivered us exactly what we wanted. And this airplane is really exactly what Edwin told me he was going to get down to the paint job. About the paint job, yeah. Like I said, the, the logo on the, on the wing. Probably a lot of celebrities on the airplane, so, you know, it's yeah. that, that whole marketing when they're taking a the picture of the, the Las Vegas strip as we're taking off a one nine right, you know, the wing, the, the, the logo just stands out. Yeah. So, you had all piston engine time, 15 years with a Baron, no jet time, no turbine time, and you get into a CJ-1 Plus, a little bit with me, but mostly with another pilot who works for us that you've been flying with. You got what, you said 45 hours? About 45 hours in the airplane. So give us, give us a, you know, the elevator pitch on what it's been like, expectations, reality, flying a jet, flying a piston. Uh, my first flight was with you, we took it off to, to, to drop it off for the paint. Okay. My very first flight in the airplane was when we went to pick up the airplane. Phoenix. Uh, a Phoenix, yeah. yeah. So I saw you had hired us uh, a ferry pilot, 
I walked under the airplane, I sat in the right seat, I didn't even know how to put my seatbelt on, I was just, I was just so lost. So the pilot flew it into Long Beach, I was still on the ramp by the time we landed in Long Beach, I was so far behind the airplane. <laughs> so then my second flight was with you, I was more calm on the left seat, it was my first time on the left seat, so it's my first glass cockpit experience and it's on a 4921, which well, I'm being told from a lot of uh, commercial pilots that it is the ultimate avionics package to learn on. All the airlines use it uh, to some degree. It's extremely complicated. It's very overwhelming. Uh, took your advice, and JR, JR is my uh, mentor pilot that you guys hired for me. He comes from an aviation or part 121 background. So we plugged it in the GPU a couple hours, kind of went through the systems. And the, the more we did, the more he added on, the more tasks he gave me. To a point that I'm about 45 hours on the airplane. I don't know at all. I feel fairly comfortable getting myself out of a jam. Uh, as long as everything's working properly, but one thing gets out of sync, you know, then yeah, you got to fall back onto. The, the problem with these these proline uh, avionics is you have to know the input that you're putting in, yeah. and you have to expect. You have to know what to expect when you do an entry, right? Uh, so it's multiple pages, multiple menus, menu instead of a menu. But I watch you work the system, and you've done everything from soup to nuts on this flight. I'm just really observing. Yeah, you really have a good command of everything. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, JR does a good job. He, every time we fly, he's got the whip out. Yeah, I do something wrong, he just kind of whips me in yeah. the hand and whips me on the knuckles. But I'm really blessed. You know, OCR, all, all, all pro pilots. Um, Times that JR, JR can't fly with me, you guys got me linked up with uh, Brian, which yeah. is, uh, he, he hands out the type ratings in the, the CJ3. Yeah. He was super impressed. Copy things that I really didn't know. I think that was for you. How about just flying in the system all the time versus, I mean, you got the airplane, you got the avionics, and then you got the, the, the IFR system and the flight levels. Any big issues there. I mean, in my opinion, it's actually easier, but what do you think? I yeah, mean, I had, um, for, for the first half of my training, uh, JR did everything, right? I just show up to the airport, everything's done, and then I, I'm more of a doer. I like to do it myself. I like to get down and dirty, so uh, started, again, every flight was adding something more to it, and started building a flight plan myself with JR, and filing it, and picking it up, and, and programming it, so it's all about getting your confidence. Once you get to that level that you're confident enough to do something, you're not, you're not afraid to push a button. Um, I still, I don't claim I know it, but even if I know it, I always ask uh, the, the co-pilot, are you okay with yeah, this? Just yeah. want to make a second opinion. In yeah. case they're not okay with it, or they don't feel comfortable with it. So I have enough um, rudder and stick time. Yeah. Flying the airplane, it, it, it wasn't hard at all. No. I think my landing, I greased my landing the first time we That's landed right. together. That's right, and uh, yeah, it, It's all about, this airplane is so fast, it's all about being ahead of the airplane, yeah. being ahead of the power. Don't fall behind. If you do, you are falling behind, don't be afraid to bring the power back. Don't be afraid to tell the controllers on EVO. Yeah. Um, and that, that so. kind of goes with where your reference for being ahead of the airplane when you first start flying a jet is, it's a big step. But that just becomes normal ops being ahead. You don't even think about it anymore. Right, exactly. You exactly. It just speed. Again, you know, Baron, I was so comfortable with uh, getting in this thing. Um, I have some, um, everything's IFR, obviously. Yeah. I'm a very decent IFR pilot. Uh, but getting used to arrivals and departures, yeah. uh, getting into airspace when uh, we did our first go around uh, last week with Brian. It was my first time ever. You know, parallel runways, uh, the 777 on the right side, one, nine, go, one, one lap in Vegas, go around, go around. And just everything was set up. Uh, altitude was in, flight director was in, just power up. Automatically, my APCs kicked in. Climb, climb, clean, yeah. cool call. Yeah. There's no cooling, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it was, I was telling JR, it, it was just the, the basic training of instrument, you know, missed approach, you know, cramp, climb, clean, cool and call. And I just followed that exactly, step by step, no except for the cooling, no mixture controls, and got us out of there. It was just very smooth, and then Brian was, he didn't do any of the controls, it was yeah. just everything was... Um, and so spe thought. speaking of speed, I mean, we never got the altitude we filed for, we're at 210, and uh, we're doing uh, three... 330 as true airspeed. This airplane's probably average at 41, uh, 385. But you're right there at 385.
Yep. Yeah. And uh, Proline Avionics, uh, this one has the uh, the uh, Tamarack winglets, which you've had uh, no issues with. Not at all whatsoever. It um, gives you some better range, better fuel bar, right. better climb. Um, never had any, never flown a jet before, never flown a jet without winglets. Yeah. So all I'm being told is all pressure the pilots, how the climb rate is much greater, it's yeah. a smoother ride. It gives us, it, it brings the CJ1 CJ1 closer to performance as an M2. Yeah. So that, that was the goal, not to spend the extra two, three million, but have an opportunity to have the same yeah. um, uh, range yeah. and that, for the most part. Yeah, and it probably does bring this airplane a little bit closer or as close, particularly on range, because you can climb more efficiently to 41 than the straight CJ1 plus, right. which gives you more fuel for, you know, for the cruise portion of the flight, which gives you extended range. Uh, and you had the uh, benefit of the logo. The logo, yeah, the logo. The, 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 it gives it an extra five feet of wingspan and, and the ramp presence. So we're we're getting ready to start a descent into uh, Havasu. Here is your Charlie Mike, Critic Two, Lake Havasu. Uh, you're already turning there anyway. Disregard that. I'll have a lower for here. Just a minute, sir. Roger. Uh, during Havasu, zero Charlie Mike. So tell us a little bit about uh, Fior, which is the name of the company. Right. This airplane so, Sure. Right. So we we got an opportunity once we when we were starting off. We we're one of the pioneers, one of the people in LA that started it. So we had an idea of making something big and great. So uh, Cookies, which is a big cannabis brand, um, took a liking to us. Our our program, the way the way we do things, we're cultivators, right? Which is the base of this whole industry. So um, signed a deal with Cookies, became partners with us. Uh, cookies gave us the platform that we need to, to become somebody great, recognized. So uh, since then, my partners and I, Serge, my, uh, Serge and myself, Serge, Mike and myself, uh, started our own brand. We said if we did it once, we could do it again. So we built something three times bigger than what we have now. We have a huge operation out in Lanto. Um, we had a, I had a dream to get an airplane, get a jet, and making it the fastest and the highest flying billboard. And there you go. that's what we did. So we can go up to 41,000 feet doing 400 how's the, knots. How's the social, mar uh, social media market? It's been amazing. For this, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's been amazing. Uh, we're using the airplane for its, its, its intensity. Yeah. Not just go snowboarding yeah. in Mammoth or just go to Vegas for the night. It's just it's, we're using it, um, you know, giving incentives to our employees. If they do well, employee of the month, we'll get taken family. We did that trip three times. It's just a, a morale booster yeah, all around. Sure. It, it, it just does a great job. Um, nice. Yeah, so it's, it's cool. It's, it's great. I love uh, I love to hear about companies that use airplanes and aviation to grow and expand. It's and an amazing push tool, Push their right? business, yeah. A lot of times you can't do it without, without an airplane. You just can't. Right. Like for you, you can't be where this thing can take you. Right. In the time exactly. it takes you there. So. Uh, for the time being, most of our trips are... Uh, Nevada, we have offices in Oregon, uh, Arizona, but we're soon expanding to Oklahoma City. Uh, Oklahoma City? Oklahoma City, Michigan are on target. Yeah. Our All next right. move. So um, we might struggle a little bit, but one stop to get there, maybe one stop on the way back, but uh, eventually we'd like to. The, the goal is to be keeping this airplane in the family, having it in my pri as my personal airplane. You're pleased with the airplane. 15 miles, opposite direction. The uh, uh, people you're flying with, uh, what the airplane's about. doing for you. Business. Yeah, absolutely. The airplane is the airplane has no issues. It just getting used to the systems, getting flying. Get OCR has been doing an amazing job addressing all squads. It does appear to be level 6800. If you want to shell out your descent a little bit, is there a Sean Mike Roger? And you know, uh, one thing that I've been noticing in a lot of the people I fly with. Is there a China Mike Roger? Um, like in this case, when you're coming into a VFR airport and the controllers say, you know, you can do a visual or, you, you know, and it's nice to see people accepting visual approaches and doing visual approaches and hand flying and retaining those no skills. It seems like I see a trend of everybody wanting, no matter what, to be on an instrument approach so they don't have to judge. You know where Altitude. they are in relation to the airport, and I think it's a good thing to keep your skills and 
your abilities to hand fly, visual approaches. Correct. Not every time, but one, uh, one mix it up so you can keep your proficiency up. That's good. Uh, it does two things, in my opinion. Gets gets you out of the, the, the system quicker. Yeah. About the ATC. And this box actually has the ability for you to build your own approach yeah, in it, right. which is amazing. Go three degree, you can do your, uh, your descent angle, three degree, pick out a waypoint five miles away from the airport, and then they'll give it to you right here up front on your display, and you get to just fly it as if you're flying a, a, a visual approach. Exactly. So it, it's an amazing system um, if you know how to use it, Yeah. if you know how to import it. Yeah. Okay, so we're what? 40, 30 miles from the field now. We're about 29 miles away from 30, the field. 30 miles away. We're going to do we're visual approach. And, and so we're going to gonna cross the field, F traffic for 1-4. Charlie Mike, contact LA 134.65. Have a good afternoon. 34.65, zero Charlie Mike, thanks for help. All right, we're about five minutes from our, our, our landing here at Lake Havasu. Edwin, thanks a lot for coming along. It's been a pleasure to you know, work with you and see you you know, I don't remember when that was, what, was that year, last October year, October of, uh, 20, a year ago, yeah. and now here he is, you know, and I'm just a passenger, basically, I mean, so to speak, he's done everything, radios, it's really cool to see that, and it says a lot about JR, right. like the level of professionalism you have, now you did have the benefit of airline type training and preparation in your primary training, which I think has some impact on how you fly now too. Right. But let's give the credit to JR. Right. JR and the whole OCR team. Yeah. Start to finish from scheduling to maintenance. Yeah. Never had to cancel a mission. Yeah. Uh, just every, the avionics is always updated. Everything's always clean. So uh, yeah, the big ups to uh, Greg, Nicole, We're gonna, JR, everybody else, Bobby. Yeah. Yeah. The whole whole the whole, the whole the great job. Just, We're gonna. Ed, Ed, we were talking before the flight, and we could spend whole time talking just about our interaction before ever getting the plane. We could spend a lot of time talking about Edwin's, you know, uh, journey to becoming a pilot. We could spend a lot of time talking about his business. We, there's a lot to talk about. We'll oh, do more I'm videos. Hours, absolutely. You know, he's going to be getting type rating here soon, so we'll be doing uh, follow-up videos with Edwin and how yeah. this is working. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.